most important element was of course the landscape. And starting to design here was of course a reaction to this extremely strong and unique landscape, but also the steep uh, slope going down to the water. My name is Leopold Benchini and I'm the architect and homeowner of Mar Mara Shack. The shack is located on Mar Mara Creek. We chose this site because it was extremely wild and the fact that you can only reach it by boat make it even more remote. And the first time I came here, the beauty of the landscape and somehow the wilderness of it was extremely inspiring. The brief for the project was very simple. It was just a little holiday uh, shack on the river. I uh, had to have a couple rooms and that's about it. So it was a very simple project with a very simple program. And it was my first project in Australia. So it was also an occasion for me to discover a bit the Australian landscape and the amazing crafts that you can find in this country. Managing a construction site remotely is always a big challenge, I believe. In this case, because of the crafts and the, the trades that are so good in Australia and the trust that I had with the builder, it was actually feasible. But to make that possible, we made a big 1 to uh, 10 model uh, in my studio in, in Switzerland that we shipped here. And that became the main uh, discussion for the construction with the builders. So I think it's a really, really special site here up the river but it's completely off-grid and only accessible by boat. That means everything had to be built by hand, uh, with no heavy machinery. So of course the entire design had to take into account that it was a house that was going to be built by two carpenters and to deal with, of course, the complexity of the weather, the tides, the floods. So when you arrive at the site by the jetty and you walk upstairs and then they lead to a single door that opens to this big space, the space we're in right now. And this is somehow the main space of the house. It's both living room, kitchen, dining space. And it has this big window that opens to the view and to the water. And in the back, you just have two small rooms uh, with bathrooms. The big south-facing window is looking only towards the water and it gives you really the impression, I guess, to be on water. So the window can also be open. It's a very large window, six meter large window that opens with uh, counterweights uh, so that the space in the living room almost feels like a terrace. The window had to be fully welded on site and it's one of these elements that couldn't be transported so it had to be divided in very small pieces of glass. Um, but this also gives more presence to the window and somehow frame the landscape into smaller parts and I actually really enjoy this feeling. So the house and the structure of the house is entirely made with uh, timber amazing woods that I had never worked with before. The big pillars that you see in the house, all the main structure is iron bark. These uh, elements in wood here are all made with the old jetty, so pieces of the jetty that we found on site. I believe that's turpentine and the top of the structure and the beam are spotted gum. With a, an unusual house, often I think you have to also designed the furniture specifically for it. So in this case, all of the timber furniture was made with the leftover of the construction. And then the fireplace, the sink, uh, and all the steel elements were also custom made. And they were made to resolve the few uh, needs for the house and to be very specific for what was needed in this house. Being in the middle of the the National Park, this area has the highest fire rating possible. And so we have to entirely clad it uh, with fiber cement uh, and plasterboard. 
and none of the exterior element of the house uh, is visually timbered today, which is a bit strange, but in the end, I quite like it. it creates a, quite a strong surprise when you enter the house and discover that it was actually an entire bit with timber, uh, which is not so obvious from the outside. Well, I think for a building like this, the most important is that it doesn't transform too much the landscape. Uh, and I'm quite uh, happy that when you walk around the house, you don't notice it too much. Surprisingly, it blends into the landscape, and I think that's the most important for a site like this one.